Shalom and blessings, everybody. I hope you're doing well. And it's uh, Shabbat Shalom when I'm recording this uh, for you. Uh, it's Shabbat today. And uh, we are in the month of Elul. The king is in the field. Uh, it's the time when uh, in those who keep Jewish tradition believe that God is close to them because the king is in the field. And it's a time of reflection for them and to to draw near to God when uh, they can before the high holy days. And so um, just wanted to talk to you this morning uh, a little bit about uh, in some translations in Luke uh, chapter 18, 8, it says, uh, Yeshua says, when I return, will I find faith? And uh, this comes on the heels of a, a kind of a major announcement in the news that 48% of Christian people uh, and Americans believe that they can go to heaven just by being good. <clears throat> and this is something that uh, needs to be addressed. Uh, in, and it's, it's kind of a theology that's a flawed theology. And here's what happens with most people uh, that believe that they can go to heaven just for being good. They are doing what's right in their own eyes. They are the judge of what's good and what's evil. Uh, they are not being judged by anybody else in, in, this, in this faith uh, because in this postmodern world, there really is no thing, such thing as absolute truth is what people are taught. And this no absolute truth leaves it to be, well, what's good for me and I believe in my heart is good for me and what you believe in your heart is good for you and all these paths lead to heaven. Lead to heaven. And that's not what scripture says at all. If you go to the Bible and you look and you claim to be a Christian, that means you're following the teachings of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Messiah. So if you're following his teachings, okay, and he said in Scripture when he spoke, he said, uh, come to me, all you who are weary and, and heavy laden. Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Okay, and the reason that his burden is light and that his yoke is easy is that his teachings are the Ten Commandments. Okay, there's the Big Ten, that's what his, his focus was on keeping the Torah. Okay, not the added additions of man, not the thoughts of man. He was the Lord of the Sabbath. He was the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, okay? And we, as people of faith, have to put our faith in Him and faith in the Father because He says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And that's, that's the direction that we're supposed to go. And it's, it's plainly lined out in the Word of the Lord. It's not my word. It's not my opinion. It's what he says. He says that you do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. Don't do this, you know. But our flesh, the natural man, wars against what the Lord wants. This is like saying, I know better. You know, and it's, it's not. You cannot be in that position. Because he's the judge of what's good. He's the one that says, I am the good shepherd. So if he is the good shepherd, then he knows what's good. He knows what's good for his people. And here's, here's the big thing, is that these commandments are guidelines and instructions for you to live your life by. There's a portion of them that deals with God, and a portion of them that deals with your dealings with man, your neighbor, you know. So what does he say? Love the Lord, your God, Yehovah, with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. 
And these two are what all the law and the prophet hinge on. Well, they do. They do hinge on that. It's, it's, these are the, if you, you know, if you take a, a lemon and you squeeze it and you render the juice out of that lemon, you have the lemon juice, right? You have the essence of what was in that lemon. And that's what he's doing is he's bringing the, the Ten Commands down into an essence when he speaks those two. That you, that you love your neighbor as yourself. Okay. But nowhere does he ever say, well, if you just do good, you're going to get to be in paradise. That's, that's not, that's a false teaching. It's a false theology. And then here's what a little, here's what goes on a lot. Okay. Well, you know, people, well, I practice yoga and I meditate. Okay. And I, I, I commune with the one of the universe. You know, yoga and the, the positions of that stuff are derived from the positions of the Hindu gods, okay? So, you, actually, it's, 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 that's the essence of where it comes from. It's not biblically focused. It's not, you know, anything to do with Christ. But yet, a lot of people do it, okay? Then... They take, well, Buddha lived a good life, so I just want to do what Buddha did, okay? Well, Buddha is a man. He wasn't re resurrected. He died. He's still dead. Yeshua was resurrected, ascended, and went to the right hand of the, of the Father, okay? So there's, there's this subtle difference. But being, just being good and proclaiming that, well, I can go to heaven by being good is a false theology. If you're under a pastor that's teaching this kind of theology, you, you should find somebody that's a little closer to the word and sticks a little closer to scripture. There are all kinds of teachings out there, okay? Uh, oh, karma. Ooh, you know, I believe in karma. Well, I believe in luck. You know, I got to carry a rabbit's foot. I mean, there's all kinds of things that men put their faith and trust in. You know, and the Lord says, when I return, will I find faith? Well, you know, Europe went down in faith. The people in Europe, there's a remnant there. But there's many, many churches that were thriving churches are now taverns and pubs and, you know, other, other businesses because they had to close up. Okay. So we're in this time where darkness and gross darkness is covering the people and people are just off doing their own thing. What's good in their eyes? What's, what's, that's not scriptural. And as a minister of the gospel, I have to come to you and say, hey, you know, this is what scripture says. This is what the Lord says. It's, it's not me. This is what's written here in his, in his word. You know, and if you're not being honest and truthful about that, then you have to, you to my pastor used to say you do need to do a checkup from the neck up. You need to correct your thinking. You need to go back to the spot where the glory poured out. When, the, when you come to your first love, if you've fallen away from the Lord, you, you need to return to your first love. Return back to him, you know. You can't just run around willy-nilly being blown every direction by things that aren't doctrinally sound or not written in Scripture. And, I, and I, this is mainly directed at people of faith, this last statement. I mean, there are people of faith that their faith has been contaminated with all this stuff of the world. You know, they think it's like a buffet. You go and you pick a little of this and a little of that and a little of that. And, oh, that's my beliefs. But I'm a Christian, you know. Oh, don't worry. It'll be all right, you know. Well, yes or no. We're all going to be judged. Every word that we speak is going to be judged. That's what Scripture says. We're all going to have to hold for account. Do you get saved? Do you put your faith in Jesus? Do you put your faith in Yeshua? Do you get saved, born again, and then just go off and live your life like you're going to, to hell? 
you know, or Hades, whatever you want to call it. You know, you're good for an hour and a half on Sunday, but the rest of the week you're out doing things that you shouldn't be doing. You know, and, and this is where we've come to. And you have to, I mean, I, I hear people, and I had this dichotomy when I, when I first got saved too, is that, you know, you're, you're of the world, but your, your, your language and the things you do speak more about what's inside. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, and that's in how you act. So if you're the judge of good, and you really don't know what good is, okay, if you have no qualifiers, uh, you're not grounded in Scripture and knowing what good is, good following the Ten Commandments, doing what the Lord's called to do, called us to do, raising your family in a godly fashion. You know, these, these are all things that we have to take a real close look at. You know, and it's, it's easy. It's easy. You know, if a ship were to leave Portugal and head for the United States and their compass was five degrees off, they would end up in a completely different destination. They might not hit the United States. They may hit Brazil. You know, they may hit hit down in the in the uh, Caicos or the you know the Turks and those islands, but their courses skew, and that's what the Lord does for us is He gives us that firm foundation. He sets that course. His word is to be a light unto our path and a lamp unto our feet. We're supposed to see His goodness in this land are you chasing the goodness of man or are you chasing the goodness of god we all have that choice and so i'm speaking to this situation scripture says there's no way to heaven except through yeshua except through jesus no way to the father because what's good in your eyes is sin in his. His ways are higher than your ways. His thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And this is, this is where you have to humble yourself and come before him and say, Lord, I made a mistake. You know, he's always willing to take anybody back. But you cannot rely on your own goodness or what you see in your eyes or your mind as being good. You have to hold it to his standard. You have to hold it to his word. You have to, you have to live a godly life. And I know that this is difficult for some. It's not easy. But there's always grace when you miss the mark. Shalom, everybody, and blessings. I just felt that this was an important message on this Sabbath day. Seek the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Shabbat Shalom.